Good morning, fish heads. Happy Monday. Start to your work week for many of you guys. I hope that you had a fantastic weekend, whether it was raking leaves and taking care of the shrubbery or getting out on the water for a few hours and really enjoying your, your day and your afternoon. This is the juice to get you through the rest of the week, and here is some eye candy. We've got a lot to get through, and I've got to get right back to it. I'm going to try and not go too long, but there's no guarantees because, you know, I always like to explain why I do what I do. We're going to go from simple to difficult patterns, I think, today or somewhere thereabouts. I think I'm just going to go through all this. Um, the simplest of what I do is just recoding confidence and, and favorite lures for customers. It's a little Norman. Almost looks like a table rock color. It looks a little bit faded, but it is a favorite of a customer of mine. So I was more than happy to recoat, and there's probably 15 or 16 over on the, uh, the clear coat rack. These things are fun. It's um, just a little glitter and that periwinkle purple gray fading down into a light yellow on the belly. None the worse for wear. Great pattern, good presentation, especially on a tough bite day. Website orders, website orders. This is my old Bull Shoals pumpkin seed. This is the way, it was, the way it was originally presented on the website. You can find this just a very simple pattern at jekyllbaits.com. Look at that clear coat shine, you guys. One of the most fun things about this particular lure is the eyes. These come from Eason over in the Gansu district in China. He's over at Shelt's Tackle. Just a very simple, not even a, a um, ear flap on this, but these are the old Bull Shoals, one of my first best sellers years ago. Next up, we have an Ozark Autumn, and all of these are ordered on the holographic 2.5 square bills, and those are available right now at Predator Tackle. And these are pretty good quality. I order quite a few from them over at Predator Baits. Pressed from a Lucky Craft. You can always tell when you see this little Y in the gill plate that it's been pressed from a Lucky Craft. I don't know how many of you guys know that or not. That's uh, it's pressed from the old model uh, Rick Klun, the 1.5s and 2.5s. Fun little bait. We have a neon pumpkin seed with that metallic blue flake paint on top of fluorescent orange and fluorescent yellow down to the belly. Also a fairly simple pattern, but fun, effective, really works in clear water. You would think, oh, maybe stained water. It's good, in, it's good in stained water, but it's really good for some reason in clear water. Um, you would think it'd be a little bit loud and obnoxious, but uh, they're pretty good, pretty good. This is the Japanese beetle along the same lines, but very contrasty. You can see that red really, really stand out off of that metallic blue underneath, fading into a green and a yellow on the back, and a blue throat. Definitely a fun little bait. Here we have the summer gill in a wake bait. All these are going to get dressed up this morning and go out the door. This is part of a larger order, so we still have a good bit of spraying left to do. Going back to um, just the clear coat, redoing clear coat. This is one of my old favorites, and I've recently done, um, if you guys saw the video that just came out on the uh, Rayburn Red. This is what the Damiki trimmers look like underneath of the repaint job that I did. And I had a few in stock, but this one actually came out of one of my tackle trays because it is absolutely one of my favorite lip lists to throw in the fall, spring, summer, not so much winter. But I, on this one, 
just for myself, I added a little bit of orange and just a little bit of iridescent purple to the tail. Tamiki Trimmer 65, Metal BBs, and uh, Eddie, if you're watching this, you can see those beautiful BBs that you're going to get in your bait. So there you have it. If you want to know what it looks like underneath, that's what the Tamiki looks like. It's got a great sound, great rattle, super effective bait, one of my faves. Um, very similar to that. And we're still looking. I'm still looking for those XR50s. Hey, guys, if, if you have some uh, new in-box XR50s, original Excalibur, lipless, hit me on a direct message because I sure could use about 50 of them. Please and thank you. They're not always easy to find. Not the not the booyahs. Not looking for the booyahs. Those have plastic BBs in them now. I need the original metal BBs. This is the Mad Hatter. Now this particular customer has ordered a Mad Hatter. Previous, real effective color. Red. Gosh, I love red in the in the fall and in the winter. Something about red just really drives the bass crazy. This is the Mad Hatter Craw. And then also the order for an Ozark. I don't know why that's looking so fluorescent green. It's actually a, a little bit deeper green. At least that's the way it looks like on my screen. It may look different when I get it edited and uh, thrown up to YouTube. Just these little Johns, these are from Dinger. These are pressed from the Spro Little John MD 50s. And also the that one knocker in there is really, really good. Love it a lot. And it's been a while, but I got an order. Uh, I've got a, a Steelers devout fan such as myself. Uh, they ordered some Steeler warts. And obviously because of copyright infringement, franchise contract obligations, it is a big no-no to put logos on any bait that uh, has not been granted permission to do so. That includes co collegiate, NFL, MLB, all that stuff. Um, and, and if they catch you, they will fine you heavily. So just be aware you guys are out there. But just a good alternative just match the hatch. Do do the team colors. Obviously, the Steelers have the black and gold with the uh, red, blue, and yellow after Pittsburgh Steel. So we got a couple of those going out. It's almost an Art Deco pattern. They requested a clear bill on these, which is fine. I get asked all the time, uh, why do you why do you clear the bills? Why do you do the whole bait? Well. The entire bait was made at a specific weight to swim a specific way. Um, so if you dip the body and you don't dip the bill, you're gonna mess the weight system up in the bait. So just do the whole, just clear, clear coat the whole thing. And, and it's gonna give you a much better presentation too. Here we go, Steelers, you're off your bye week this week, which means that this video is being shot in the present because we are just finishing up week seven in the NFL. Okay, we've got a few more warts to get through. This is the original spring peeper pattern. It's got a little blush orange and iridescent purple on the belly in the back. It fades into that real light sepia greenish. And then an iridescent purple, translucent purple on the bill. Simple pattern? Sure is. Effective? You betcha. This time of year? Deadly. Uh, I, I actually did a couple extra of these for myself and I'm going to throw them at Norfolk and Bull Shoals the next time that I'm up that way. And hopefully it'll be within the next couple weeks while the fall bite is still hot. This is, a lot of folks would call it a citrus, I call it a Caribbean. Um, just because it's a little bit brighter and more obnoxious on the bill. It's got that fluorescent sunburst bill. Very translucent on the back end. I even painted the initials in blue instead of the black pen that I normally use. Just for some contrast on the belly. But you can see how translucent this bait is. I love wiggle warts. And I tell you more and more, I've got a client now um, up in Alaska who is using these things for salmon. 
and uh, actually uh, Jared if you're listening he's uh, he paints his own and does a lot of stuff so we have con- we've had a couple of conversations about different painting and clear coating this is that blind bass with a little pale yellow lip it's got the white molted or blind eyes in it and then I've got a red-eyed glitter pattern almost in the Ozark colors it's got the red eyes got the orange bill that deep moss green some glitter down into a khaki green this is on a red eye strike king red eye shad and this is that electric crackle pattern this I don't advertise on the website it is a specific ask that I don't but it's a lot of fun to make got another one of these done as well this is on a rebel I think it's on a rebel it's on a brand name I know that I did about six of these there we go going after some walleye and some uh, some tiger musky with these guys Smithwick it might be a Smithwick what else do we have left to get through wow 12 minutes on this sorry you guys a little bit long I had to ask what this was the other day um, I'm painting a few different patterns for customers and uh, I've never thrown it before so this uh, was a reclaim washed up on one of my local lakes near where I live and come to find out it is a thin fin and it's circa 1980 so it is pre Rapala. So the concept of this, the Thin Fin, if you want to hear a little bit of angler lore and legend, as the story goes, the Storm Brothers in Norman, Oklahoma, were pitching their ideas to uh, probably Johnny Morris. They don't say, because a lot of times when I don't know what something is, I like to do as much research as I can, so I get knowledgeable on what items are. So Storm Brothers were trying to pitch their lures to one of the larger outdoor manufacturing companies outdoor retailers which i would imagine at the time was probably a bass pro shop so they were probably sitting in johnny's office or someone someone similar to johnny morris a buyer maybe and they had this expensive for the time they called it the two dollar lure in a dollar 25 cent world um, called a glop and the glop was a miserable fail um, that nobody wanted to take a risk on it and then Gary Storm pulled out a thin fin and everybody went wild over it and became one of their biggest sellers so um, I didn't know a whole lot about this bait I just kind of found it and you can tell it's older um, I think when Rapala took it over they put a, a clear bill on and this is just obviously it's a mold that came out of one of their plants I think one of their plants even caught fire if if I am, have read my history correct um, in Oklahoma and one thing a, as a custom painter that's a lady in this industry 95% um, of the factory workers and and the folks that pressed these types of molds originally for storm were women so women in the industry go ladies so this is just a recreation of a discus and I'm playing around with jerkbait patterns for this because I have a client that wants a jerkbait pattern in this specific style so just wanted to do a little quick mock-up of what that might look like and last but not least since we're almost at 15 minutes it's probably to date the longest workshop update that I've had and uh, I, I would apologize except for we just we had a lot to get through today so thanks for bearing with me um, next to the last is this so this is a bomber long a also not a, uh, a knockoff and this has got tiger musky candy written all over it and more than likely because it's a floating jerk bait I'm gonna put a long feather streamer on the back of this bait 
because there are tiger muskie in and around where I live and some of the river systems. You get on those clear shallow grasses and they just love it. So, put this together last night. This one I'm hanging on to, folks. Gotta hang on to a couple of baits every now and then. And then, I got to do another Japanese sunrise. I love doing baits like this. It's uh, definitely not something that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. It's in the specialty line. If you go to jekyllbaits.com, um, you guys can take a look at some of the special specialty stuff that I do. Uh, occasionally, it's small batch runs. But this is the Japanese sunrise, and it's done in uh, to pay homage and, and honor to one of the one of the industry leaders in innovative products and that would be that uh, Japanese domestic market and it is time for me to refill my coffee and get back to the spray bench thank you guys so much for hanging out uh, I know we went long on this but it's just going to be a single edit I tried to do it in a single take um, and that's it uh, yep I did miss one it's just a, this is a little dinger the bandit 200 pressing that he does so this is pressed from a bandit mold and it's his dinger 200 series and this is in a hot craw almost a red see you guys happy casting have a great week